Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about something called friend classes and friend functions. Um, these are basically a way to kind of um, get around your private access level. Or basically you give some things certain permission to kind of access your private access level, um, even though most stuff wouldn't. So I'm going to talk about friend classes first. Um, just a good old A class. I mean, default constructor. Um, and then I'm also going to make a B class. Which is going to be similar. Again, these aren't really um, applicable. But they're just to demonstrate this relationship that we can set up. Uh, okay, so say we wanted to have some method in B, um, I'll just call it something, and I'll go ahead and put it right here. Um, and what we want to be able to do in here is make an instance of class A, and then um, output it, uh, output it's X, I should say. Uh, basically, we want to go like that. And we want to have this method be within class B. And then in main, uh, we make some instance of the B class. And call that method. Um, so you should be able to tell by now um, that this is not going to work. Because we're trying to access a private member here. Um, outside of the class itself, outside of its own class. So we should get some errors here. Okay, there we go. Uh, int ax is private, so we can't be accessing it outside of the class. Um, but if we want to kind of uh, go around that and give class B special permission to access private members in class A, uh, we can do that, and the way you do that is uh, in the public access level of class A, you type friend class B. And what that means is that, uh, okay, B is a friend of class A, meaning B can access A's private members. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. If we compile now, we won't get the errors, and uh, we'll get the proper result. Um, so yeah, that's friend classes. Are they really useful? Um, sometimes, I guess. I haven't really found a lot of use for them, but then again, I haven't done a whole lot of programming, like real in industry programming, I mean, just like hobby. Um, but uh, I haven't found particular use for them. Usually you can uh, come up with a better design than friend classes. Um, like, for instance, instead of having a friend class, like, let me delete that, we could have a function here, or a method, called getx, and have that return x, like that. And then, in b, we can just call that getx. And that way, we're still allowing b to access uh, the, the value of that member, but we're not letting it modify it. Because you got to keep in mind that when we make b our friend class, that means that we're giving it free reign to also modify this variable. Uh, I guess I didn't show that, but now you know. So you got to keep that in mind. Be be wary of that. Um. So now let's talk about friend functions. Uh, they're very similar. You're just giving a specific function uh, special privileges to access the private members in the class. So let's go ahead and just outside of uh, our class, let's make some function. Um, I guess I'll just make the something thing again, and maybe that takes in an instance of class A. And then we want to go like that. Again, we could be using that getx method, and then we wouldn't have to worry about this, but maybe you don't want to do that. Um, so again, this won't work because um, we're trying to access that private member. Um, I won't even bother to compile because you can probably figure that out for yourself. But um, if we want to give this function special permission, we type friend, and then you basically put the prototype of the function within the class, by the way. Um, so now, if we can call that function, well, I guess we also have to make 
an instance and then pass that in. Um, oops. Uh, so now we can compile. Oops, what did I do wrong here? Line 22. Um, what is this? A pointer? Oh gee. Maybe it's these parentheses. It seems weird, but. Oh, alright, whatever. Guess you shouldn't have those parentheses there when you're using the default constructor. It's kind of odd, but whatever. Um, so there we go. Uh, all I'm showing is that uh, this f function has access to that public or that private level uh, because we declared it such in our class. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much friend classes and friend functions. Now before I finish out the video, I want to show you um, the the use for friend functions that I've found. Um, it involves operator overloading, and basically my goal here is to be able to go like that and see out um, our A class uh, without having to call its output method. So the way we would do that is we'd, uh, we'd make a, um, an operator uh, less than less than or stream insertion uh, function, like a global operator stream insertion uh, function. And uh, the first argument is going to be an OStream reference O. Now OStream is a class defined in the IOStream library, and Cout is an instance of the OStream uh, class. So by this I mean we would have Cout be the first argument, and then our instance of class A be the second argument. And what all I'm going to do here is go instance.x, and then I won't even do the endl. Um, so now, because we're trying to access the, the private member here, we need to make this a friend function. Like that. Um, so now this should work. Let's also, below this, do an endl. Okay, no compile errors. And now we're uh, seamlessly using our custom class with cout. Um, so something to keep in mind, uh, usually when we use cout, we kind of chain together the operators like that, and that's not going to work this time, because, yeah, we'll get this weird error, because basically, yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, what we need to do is we need our operator function here to return an OStream reference, because what's going to happen is it's going to do this, and then that's going to return cout, because basically we're going to return O. So we're going to return C out from this little operation. So then it'll do this operation with endl, which is already defined. Um, but we need to make sure that we return that reference so that we can chain these together. So now that we've done that, uh, we can do this all seamlessly in one line with the endl, and uh, it'll work just fine. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, You'll see me using friend functions for that, um, just because I kind of prefer doing it that way instead of the get x. But you could also have accomplished this without a friend class if you wrote out that get x method. So it's uh, it's up to you as the programmer to decide the implementation for that. Or even if you want that kind of implementation, again, it's all up to you. Uh, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. Um, rate it high if you liked it. Rate it low if you uh, didn't like it so much. Leave a comment or send me a message if you'd like me to elaborate more on a certain or something that I talked about or if you're just confused about something, uh, I'd love to help. And subscribe if you want to see more videos right as they come out. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you next time.